Welcome friends, it's Bob and Fran, your healthy aging advocates, authors, and proponents of a whole food plant-based lifestyle. Today, our special guest is Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, the esteemed surgeon, researcher, and clinician at the Cleveland Clinic. He is a respected pioneer in the whole food plant-based movement. He was featured in the Forks Over Knives documentary and is the author of the life-changing book, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. It is our honor and our pleasure for you to be visiting with us today, and we welcome you. Thank we want you. to tell you that we feel like we know you already, oh, and yeah. I'll tell you why. <laughs> we were very fortunate about three years ago to have a whole food plant-based doctor move to our community. And the first time we went to see him, he gave us a homework assignment. That was the homework assignment. <laughs> to read, re prevent, and reverse heart disease. And we didn't have really heart issues. No, neither of us had heart issues. And uh, we never had a weight problem, so we didn't give much thought to oil. We thought, you know, olive oil, Mediterranean diet, pretty healthy, right? Well, after reading your book, we eliminated the olive oil. And although it, our health continued to be good, our weight dropped 10 pounds without even dieting because we didn't realize just how much uh, the olive oil was affecting us calorie-wise. You know, we sort of view you as a true revolutionary in medicine. I wondered, uh, for starters, if you could share some insights on how you evolved to become an advocate for a plant-centered approach to preventing and reversing heart disease. Could you speak to that? Uh, sure. It really uh, probably began at its genesis in 1979 or 80 when I was chairman of the Breast Cancer Task Force. I became increasingly disillusioned with the fact that for no matter how many women I was doing breast surgery, I was doing absolutely nothing for the next unsuspecting victim. That led to a bit of global research on my part and it was quite striking to identify that there were no, numerous cultures where breast cancer rates were 30 and 40 times less frequent than in the United States. And if you looked at rural Japan in the uh, 1950s, Breast cancer was very infrequently identified, yet as soon as they would move to the United States by the second and third generation, they now had the same rate of breast cancer as their Caucasian counterpart. And perhaps even more compelling was in 1958, in the entire nation of Japan, how many autopsy proven de deaths were there from cancer of the prostate? 18. 18. Pretty mind boggling. By 1978, they were up to 137, which still pales in comparison to the 28,000 men who will die this year in, from prostate cancer in this country. So somewhere along the line at this time, it became apparent to me that there would be more bang for the buck. <clears throat> if I could look at heart disease, because as part of this global review, it was increasingly apparent that there were multiple cultures where cardiovascular disease is virtually non-existent. I mean, if you think about rural Okinawa, rural China, Central Africa, the Papua Highlands in New Guinea, the Tarahumara, Northern Mexico, heart disease is not there. What an embarrassment for the medical profession to think that we've known that for over a hundred years. And yet, do we ever take that information from those cultures and bring it to our country to eliminate heart disease? No, <laughs> we, we, do, we deal with drugs and stents and bypasses, none of which have a single solitary thing whatsoever to do with the causation of the illness, yeah. So when I just recognized that it had to be uh, cardiovascular disease that would be the the point of entry into perhaps getting rid of these diseases. You can't just do do this by <laughs> you can't just do this by making a, a pronouncement that people should stop eating to hurt their heart. You've got to do the research. 
And that's when I, when I was still by 1985, when I started our first program, uh, it was small because I was still, I had my surgical obligations that, that I uh, had for, uh, as a general surgeon. And uh, that's when it's, that's how it got started. Um, our viewers are very interested in healthy aging and healthy eating. So can even older people benefit from switching from a typical SAD diet, the standard American diet? Oh, yeah. oh my, my oldest patient, uh, he started with me when, at age 87. He came from California to, to Ohio. He'd been told that he had to have bypass surgery. He didn't want to have it. And of course, like everybody who is going to have elective surgery, if they are willing to make a commitment to whole food, plant-based nutrition, they won't have to have their intervention, which is which is worthless in terms of uh, having anything to do with the causation of the illness. And there are significant downsides, obviously, from that. So the oldest patient was 87 when he started. And he will be 100 this May. Oh, great. <laughs> so I'm wondering, how fast can a person reverse a chronic issue like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, or even heart disease? I switch. Obviously, it varies with the individual and the degree of commitment that they make. Yeah. Uh, we'll hold plant-based nutrition, so it's hard to say any one figure, but uh, you, we can see uh, reversal uh, from a standpoint of a PET scan. In other words, if you do a PET scan on somebody who is, comes to you when they first see you and they've got uh, an area of ischemia in the heart muscle that is very clearly being poorly uh, perfused with blood. Uh, we've seen as early as three weeks when you repeat the PET scan after they've started the program for three weeks, you can see the area that has previously been poorly perfused. Mm -hmm. Now it's reperfused. In other words, the vessels have opened up. But what happens in those situations, and the reason, one of the reasons it happens so promptly is that uh, when we first see these patients, their endothelial cells are really pretty beaten up. I mean, that's, I'm talking now about the cells that, as you know, line, line the innermost layer of the artery. And the endothelial cells manufacture a truly remarkable molecule of gas called nitric oxide. And you recall that it is nitric oxide, which one of its jobs is it's the strongest blood vessel dilator. And so the, when these people come to us and they, <laughs> they are so diminished in nitric oxide, they don't have very much of a vasodilator. But as soon as you start getting them to change their eating habits and you have restoration of the endothelial cells to make nitric oxide. And the other thing that happens is that when we first see patients, when they come to us, their endothelial cells have really become their enemy. And by that, I mean, they're making two molecules that are vasoconstrictive endothelin and thromboxane. And so that's another reason that in three weeks you can see this begin to open up because when you think about it, I, I have a wonderful slide that shows all of the, the heart uh, without any muscle on it. So what you see is this configuration of the heart all made up by all these vessels. And where the three main vessels of the heart go, they dive into the heart muscle. And in this slide, you can see literally the thousands and thousands of interconnecting muscle, uh, vessels. And it's really quite striking that, uh, that <clears throat> when you ask a senior a clinical cardiovascular pathologist, how often um, in the deceased, when they go through 200 hearts uh, dissecting them on the deceased. How often do they ever see any kind of plaque or blockage in the coronary artery 
once the artery has dived into the muscle? His answer, never. So what, what is happening is all these thousands of interconnecting intramuscular arteries are all pinched when we first see these people because of endothelial and enterohomoxane, the molecules that made by endothelial cells when, they, when you're so mean to them, <laughs> when they become your enemy. So suddenly within three weeks, this entire intramuscular cascade of interconnecting vessels opens. It's not the opening because it's not, it's not, they're not, they don't have blockages within them. It's just that they're crimped, they're pinched because of, and so suddenly what you do is you open up these thousands and thousands of interconnecting vessels. And that's why a patient literally within two or within four to six or eight or 10 days after you start treating them, let's say previously they had to walk two blocks before they got chest pressure. Now they have to walk six or eight blocks before they get chest and you've got them hooked. They suddenly realize that what they are doing is making a profound difference. That's great. Now I know that that's wonderful regarding the heart, but a lot of people are concerned about cognitive health. How does a whole food plant-based diet benefit one's cognitive health? Better, better blood supply mm -hmm. to that's your brain. Good. I mean, it's, it kind of stands to reason. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I know there's so many people concerned about dementia these days. Well, it's interesting. When you look at dementia, there's a uh, wonderful uh, study by, I uh, can't remember her name right now, from the West Coast, uh, who in 2001, they had looked at over 5,500 MRIs of the brains of Americans. And at age 50, they begin to see these tiny little white spots, mm -hmm. which are little strokes. Mm -hmm. But you know, at age 50, it's a big brain and it's tiny strokes, so really not much of a problem. However, suddenly you're no longer 50. You keep eating the American way and now you're to 65 and you find yourself more often than before saying something like, Sweetheart, where'd I leave the car keys? Well, you kind of get through that. Bingo, you blink your eye and you're 75. You look at your wife and you say, oh, sweetheart, where'd I leave the car? <laughs> well, you kind of get through that. Before you know it, you're 85. <clears throat> you look at her and say, are you my sweetheart? <laughs> I can't change that. That doesn't get reversed. You don't suddenly develop that dementia at age 85. You work hard in all those preceding decades to lay the foundation <clears throat> for vascular dementia, yeah. So we're, we're very big proponents of using the whole food plant-based diet as a way to prevent disease and disability. Sadly, in medical school or in postgraduate training, the priority of any education in nutrition is practically negligible. And so it's not that they're means, these people are mean-spirited. They just <clears throat> don't know any better. People have a real hard time giving up oil for cooking and for salad dressing and I wrote a paper, yeah, they, they can, that they can easily read. I wrote a paper that was published in the International Journal of Disease Reversal and Prevention in 2019. The title of it was, Is Oil Healthy? And I review the animal studies and the human studies showing the devastation to the endothelial cell. Because there, there was really, um, you know, few years ago, the Mediterranean diet was all the rage. And I remember we used to even have like little dishes of olive oil on the table when we served dinner and put a little pepper in it and you would dip your bread in it. And that seemed so healthy at the time, <laughs> but we know better now. <laughs> I think it was uh, my good friend, uh, 
Neil Barnard, who did a comparison study of the Western, this is a Western, no, I think it was a Mediterranean diet versus a plant-based, and of course, plant-based diet just blew, blew away. The Mediterranean diet is great if you want to slow the rate of heart disease progression, but uh, that, I don't think that's the goal that we, we want. <laughs> right. Uh, another question we get, are, are, do you uh, advise people to take any supplements on a whole food plant-based diet? And if so, which one? No, I, like, I like to take uh, B12. Yeah. But I think there have been a couple of articles in very, uh, it, both in the one in the New England Journal of Medicine, the other in the, uh, I believe it was the American College of Cardiology, where a group of really re highly respected physicians have pretty well indicated that you're much better off getting your nutrients from your food. Yeah. So, and, <laughs> and, and maybe I'm going to be inclined to feel that way about vitamin D uh, as well, because as long as you don't overdo it. Yeah. Here's another one. This is a good one. I uh, got this, uh, this uh, yesterday, I think. I can't go whole food plant based because I can't give up cheese and we get, I can't give up. Well, no, some people feel that way about cocaine, you know. That. <laughs> <laughs> so, the question, so the question is can I cheat a little bit on a whole food plant based diet? <laughs> Well, I'll, I think I can answer that best by a couple that I was counseling maybe a, a couple of weeks ago who the husband had a heart attack and uh, I went through the whole nine yards about the endothelial. The reason that he had his heart attack was because he had progressively destroyed his endothelial output of nitric oxide. And then she looked at me and said, uh, but Dr. Esselstyn, that's fine, but what are, what are the cheat days? And I, well, I'm not sure I'm clear. Would you spell that for me? Yeah, she said C-H-E-A-T. I said, you mean like if he's good all week long, he can cheat on Saturday and Sunday? <laughs> yeah. So no, I, let me just put it in context. What you're saying is your husband has his heart attack because he's destroyed enough of his endothelium that he didn't have enough nitric oxide to protect himself from making the blockages and plaque. And you're asking me, if it would be okay for him to continue 104 days out of 365 to continue to destroy his endothelial production of nitric oxide and the few endothelial cells he has remaining so that he can have a second heart attack. Is that what I'm hearing? Oh, I didn't think of it that way. <laughs> another, another question we've been getting a lot of recently uh, are concerning whether or not People should be eating these plant-based, like fake meats. You see them advertised now by, in restaurants. Like beyond, yeah, Beyond Meat and Impossible. Oh, so many you know, new ones. They're, yeah. filled, they're filled with oil. They got heme iron. They're just you no. Know, they're they're very unhealthy, and I certainly encourage our patients to avoid that. That don't. It may be a day that they come where they can make one that isn't uh, harmful, but. There's never been any study, studies on these about whether they're safe or not. And I've had some patients who, one patient in particular, who converted to that and had a heart attack. Uh, uh, now, there's a lot of confusion out there. There's a lot of popular online doctors. Some say you shouldn't eat potatoes. Some say you shouldn't eat grains. Some say you should eat a nutritarian diet or a flexitarian diet. People are so confused, they don't know what to believe. Read my book. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Read my lips. <laughs> oh, there's anytime you've got something which is so uh, intensely, intensely per, uh, personal, there's bound to be uh, uh, skeptics, which is, which is fine. But I think what we have to be guided by uh, is the science. And what other, there's no other diet that can reverse, that I'm aware of that has ever reversed heart disease other than a plant-based diet. Not the Mediterranean, not the Western diet, no. I wonder if you could uh, just uh, give us some idea of what's going on trend-wise in the plant-based movement. Uh, are more people, uh, as far as you understand, going toward that 
more healthy eating? Oh, totally. I mean, when you think that what, it, what it, when you imagine what it was like with my, when I was started this in 1985, I mean, it was Dean Orange and myself. I can't imagine it. <laughs> and, I mean, and everybody just totally. And even uh, today, obviously, there's resistance, but it's so enormous. You hear you have the, uh, the Plantrician Physician Group, 2,000 physicians. You have American College of Lifestyle Medicine, what, 5,000 physicians. Where, where were they 30 years ago? <laughs> so still it's not it's not enough but it's 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 remarkable what in your opinion is the best way to start a whole food plant-based diet you jump in a hundred percent do you gradually change what's in your pantry to more healthy foods you give it a try for 30 days what what is your advice uh, to most of your patients the manel chemical census center in Philadelphia did an interesting study where they took three groups of patients and one was getting 34% fat, which is the typical measure of the American diet. The other was down at 20% and the other group was down at around 11 or 12% where we are. And at the end of uh, 12 weeks, one of those groups had lost their craving for fat. Which one? The one at eleven percent, because what's happening when you try to make these changes? You have to downregulate your fat receptor and your sugar receptor in your brain. So that if you happen to be very careful all through the week, but on the weekend you decide you're going to reward yourself because you were so good, then you never downregulate the fat receptor. And you're constantly in this state of misery and denial, and you have recidivism and failure. So we really, uh, and I think it's important to have patients understand what's going on during this time period. And the other thing that, that, that when you do it that way, what happens, especially with the patients who are the persons who have some degree of chest pressure, chest angina, or shortness of breath, when they, when they suddenly see that going away, yeah, you got them hooked. Dr. Esselstyn, we really thank you for visiting with us today and sharing your knowledge and wisdom. Well, I'm not, I'm not thank you. But when you, th you, you think about the tremendous amount of money that is being spent through Medicaid and, and Medicare, if you have a healthier population, Imagine that the uh, the amount of money that would be really uh, put aside for so many other things that we really need. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All yeah. right. Well, what a, what a pleasure to be with you. And to our viewers, we love having you on this healthy aging journey with us. We would appreciate you giving this video a thumbs up, leaving a comment, subscribing and getting notified of our next video. And we look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye Let's for now. <laughs> All Thank right, you. guys.